Hey there, I'm Dan Chambers, and this is 10 Minute Bible Bites, the big cast that impacts God's Word 10 minutes at a time. Thanks for studying with me. We are in Matthew chapter 24. This is part three, and so we're going to pick up where we left off in our last study. I told you I'm handing you the keys to understanding Matthew chapter 24, and I said one of those keys is verse 34. I said you need to write in the margin of your Bible beside verse 34 two words, time text. Let's read it again. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. And so Jesus is telling us that everything that he has said before verse 34 is going to happen during that generation. Now, when we left our Bible study the last time, I pointed out that in verse 29 through 31, you see a lot of images that sure don't sound like the, sec the destruction of the temple. They sound like second coming language. That after the great tribulation, the sun is going to be darkened, the moon's not going to give its light, the stars are going to fall from the sky, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and the Son of Man will be coming on the clouds of the sky, and he's going to send forth his angels with a great trumpet, and they're going to gather to the, the elect from the four winds. People say that has to be second coming language. No, don't forget the time text. That's the key, one of the keys to Matthew chapter 24. This generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Okay, one of the things that I said to you in our last episode, though, was people, some people change the meaning of generation. They say, well, Jesus can't be talking about just those, uh, his contemporaries, those who were living when Jesus lived. Because this is, this is second coming language here, especially verse 29 through 31. Everybody can see that. And so it has to mean something else. Uh, I've got a couple of Bibles with me. I'm sure you see them sitting here. I brought these just to uh, show you how people sometimes change the meaning of a word. Uh, in, in this particular Bible, this is the uh, New Inductive Study Bible, one that I just pulled off my shelf. Uh, it has some, uh, some footnotes and things like that. And this is, this is pretty common in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 34, what you'll often see. By the word generation, they do have a footnote. And when I check what the footnote is, it says, or race. They say the, the meaning of this word could be race. And what they're talking about is it could mean the Jewish race. And so if you apply that meaning to the word, then you can say, okay, what Jesus is saying here is that the Jewish race will not pass away until these things take place. Okay, there's still obviously Jews around. So all of these things that Jesus has said before verse 34, they haven't really happened yet. Um, but here's another Bible. This is the ESV uh, Crossway Study Bible. I recently got that. I, I like Bibles, and so new study Bibles come out, and I'll oftentimes grab one. There will be subtle differences, and since I'm a Bible collector, I picked this one up not too long ago. Uh, it has in its study notes, it has this huge section, I mean a huge paragraph on this generation will not pass away, and it begins like this. Several interpretations have been offered for this difficult passage. And then it expounds on five different uh, interpretations that have been offered for this difficult passage, it says. This is what you typically find in uh, a lot of study Bibles. When it comes to this verse, they, uh, they try to find or suggest that there may be a different meaning to the word generation. Uh, well... It really isn't that complicated. Let me give you a secret to good Bible study, okay? Anytime that you see a word in Scripture in any particular place, and it might be disputed, someone might say, well, it might mean something else. Uh, here's the first thing that you need to do. You need to ask yourself, okay, uh, it, does this word appear anywhere else in this book that I'm studying? Uh, in this case, we would say, okay, does this word appear anywhere else in the book of Matthew? And if it does, then go to all the different places that it's used and see how it's used. And so, 
Uh, we're not going to take the time to go to every place that this word is used in the book of Matthew, but I do want to take you to a couple of places that it's used. The first place I don't want to uh, go to, let's go over to Matthew chapter 11. So let's just flip over a few chapters to Matthew chapter 11. When you get there, look down at about verse 16. This is where Jesus says, and again, he's using the word. He says, but to what shall I compare this generation? It's like children sitting in the marketplace who call out to the other children and say, we played the flute for you and you didn't dance. We sang a dirge and you didn't mourn. Listen, we wanted to play wedding, the kids say. You didn't want to play that. We wanted to play funeral. And you didn't want to play that either. He says, for John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, behold, he's a gluttonous man and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Your wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. And so uh, those who lived at that time, he says, Jesus says, what, uh, to what shall I compare this generation they're the ones, the people that were living at the same time Jesus was, they were the ones who were being critical of John. And they were the ones being critical of Jesus. They criticized John for fasting. And they criticized Jesus for eating and drinking. It was that generation. It was the people that were living at that time. Um, there's other places that we can go to. For example, just go one chapter over, chapter 12. When you get to chapter 12, look down at about uh, uh, verse 38. That's where we want to be. Then some of the scribes and the Pharisees came to him. Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. And he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation craves for a sign. So again, Jesus uses that word generation, an evil and adulterous generation uh, craves for a sign, and yet no sign will be given to it but the sign of Jonah the prophet. For as Jonah was in the three days, Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now he's going to use actually in this context the word generation four times. He's going to use it there in verse 39. You'll see it there. You'll see it in verse 41 where he says, The men of Nineveh will stand up with this generation at the judgment and will condemn it because they repented. Verse 42, The queen of the south will rise up with this generation at the judgment. Um, and so he's going to continue to use that and he's going to get down in verse 45 and you're going to see it again uh, at the very end of verse 45. Uh, that is the way that will also be with this evil generation. And so who's he talking about when he uses this word generation four times? And he says, this generation. And he says, this generation is going to get one sign. Well, this is the only generation, the people that were living when Jesus lived, uh, that were going to be able to witness his resurrection. You just can't substitute the words Jewish race uh, for generation in these verses. Hey, let me give you one more, okay? I know we're kind of really dealing with this for uh, at, at length, but that's okay because as you've seen, what you're going to find out a lot of people is they're trying to understand Matthew chapter 24. They're going to change the meaning of the word generation there. That's why I say Matthew chapter 24 is one of the most misunderstood chapters in all of the New Testament. This is one of the reasons. One more place, I promise. We could go to more, but we're just going to look at one more verse in Matthew where the word generation is used. First chapter of Matthew, turn over to Matthew chapter 1. The genealogy of Jesus is given here. And when you get down to verse 17, after um, Matthew gives, uh, you know, so-and-so is the father, so-and-so who is the father, so-and-so who is the father, so-and-so. You get down to verse 17, he says, So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations from David to the deportation of Babylon, 14 generations, and from the deportation of Babylon to the Messiah, 14 generations. And so again, you can't substitute the word Jewish race there. This is talking about a generation. And so we're talking about the average lifespan of a person 30 to 40 years. And so we go back to verse 34. The time text is one of the keys to unlocking Matthew chapter 24. Jesus uses that word generation throughout Matthew, and Matthew uses that word in its normal, ordinary sense. 
of the people living all in the you know the, the neighborhood of 30 to 40 years. And so we take it at its face value then. Contextually, he's talking about the people who are living at the same time. This generation will not pass away until all of these things take place. Well, what does that mean about verses 29 through 31? Hey, we're going to get to that in another episode of 10-Minute Bible Bites. Thanks for studying with me.